Hey boys, welcome back to the ARPG Corner. Now, it's been a hot minute, we haven't done a build video in about a week, but the reason for that is, I think ever since that 1.0.5 nerf, I've been somewhat uh, cradling myself in a corner, trying not to cry over my brilliant Immortal Warrior King being utterly nerfed into the ground. I'm sure we all felt that one pretty hard. Not entirely unexpected, of course. But, you know, something that hurt all the same. So since then, I've been doubling back and looking at the game's meta, looking at ways to create more viable builds, different ways of playing through the game, and ways to actually get back into the end game without using, you know, exploitative broken builds. My initial idea was to do an Infinity Blades build, play out that, you know, Dark Templar fantasy from StarCraft, and a lot of you guys are into that as well. Now, after, I guess, hours or days of trying that out, I can say definitively that Infinity Blades suck. They suck. Do not touch them until the game is rebalanced. It's a complete waste of time. If you want that kind of a build archetype, you can just use Slayer's Flurry with some kind of a Spell Stalker build, uh, and that'll get you all the way there, basically. And that's possibly the next build uh, guide that I'm going to do. If you guys are interested in that, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'm kind of curious to take a poll of how you feel, what you want to see. Uh, speaking of which, if you want more build guides, if you want more Walson content, make sure to smash the subscribe. Uh, that way you will notice and see all the videos and down the track. That being said, one thing I do want to ask you guys before we move forward is, would you be interested in a playthrough of the story mode in co-op? So I can bring a friend along and we can kind of, you know, ease up, do less number crunching, less kind of crazy end gamey stuff, just relax and show you guys how to get through the main campaign without too much trouble, low to mid-level builds and just kind of enjoy the experience of playing what's otherwise a pretty fun game. Let me know if you're interested in that and uh, if, you know, there's a critical mass of interest, we'll definitely get it done. So with this, the way we're going to tackle this build is by me basically boring you to death talking about all the different attributes, all the passive nodes, and all of the skills up front. I will have the footage appended to the end of this video. So if you're just interested in the footage and me kind of talking through the build, I'll have a timestamp below, so make sure to click that. That way you can kind of see a bit more exciting content in the meantime. So the archetype for this build. Going all the way back to the year 2000, one of my very first builds in Diablo 2, the one that got me into ARPGs, was the Whirlwind Barbarian. What I loved about the Whirlwind Barbarian was the self-sustaining nature of it, the infinite resource, the infinite life leech. You could just hit right click and just play through, play through the game, just do everything. Kill the mobs, move and kill, get all of the items that you want and just not at any point have to stop and reflect and think about anything, which is sort of the ultimate barbarian power fantasy, right? We've managed to make this work again in Walsam. This is a very end game capable build, uh, super fun to play and it will destroy story mode as much as it will destroy the mid game. End game gets a little more tricky, especially if you have lower health pool like I do. I like being a bit glassy, I like farming more quickly, but if you want more survival, you can certainly spec for that. Alright, so without further ado, let's get into the nitty gritty. This stuff will be familiar to you if you've done just about any other build in Walson. You make your way through the soldier tree, and you pick up all the crit stuff. You keep picking up all the crit stuff into the assassin tree, right, all the way down here. That's all a no-brainer. That's all been nerfed, unfortunately, which is, it hurts every single build in the game. But, you know, it is what it is. We then make our way down into the Heat of Battle, 25 Rage per hit taken. This is a build maker for us, and I'll explain why later. We make our way down through Soldier into Cabalist, and this is another build maker, right? So we make our way down into these two arms that give us the bulk of the ailment stack um, bonuses. So essentially, what we're trying to make our way down to is Immortal Offering. Killing an enemy grants 5% damage as corresponding damage type for each ailment stack on that enemy basically a massive damage boost once you're rolling this build correctly and i'll explain why as we push on this gives you another 10 maximum ailment stacks until you make your way to insidious decay gives you another two ailment stacks inflicted uh, but the cost is obviously to your flat damage 30 percent we make our way down to power of the first men 50 percent chance to multiply the number of ailment stacks inflicted by two we convert that to 100 percent by getting the modifiers that stem off it so we're inflicting tons and tons of stacks every single time there's a tick there's multiple ticks and the more ticks there are the more flat damage boost we get from immortal offering the whole thing synergizes with itself it's a no-brainer we work our way up into grievous afflictions one more additional ailment exponentially more damage right 
Now we work our way down into Abyssal Shaper. What this means is when we apply element stacks, we get the same element stacks on ourselves in return. This is amazing because so we'll be doing about four different types of uh, elements. And even if two of those are DOT, that's multiple ticks of damage on us per second, right? And if we go back to the heat of battle, what does that mean? 25 rage per hit taken. Every single time there's a tick on us, we get rage. That's what gives us our self-sustaining infinite rage resource, right? So it isn't just 25. We pick up another 10 uh, in another tree, which I'll go over once we get to it. So make our way down to Warmonger. Pick up Bestial Frenzy for the flat damage whenever there are enemies near you. You can grab the modifiers if you have the extra points here. Work your way down to Brutality, Extra Ferocity. Get the Global Life Leech if you don't have enough on your weapon. I do, so I've spared this point, but it's usually a good idea to pick it up. Here's another important build maker, Manic Slaughter. 2% damage per 100 unconsumed rage points, because we're almost always topped up while blade storming. That's just extra flat damage. 35 rage generation on kill, also important for topping up our rage. The whole thing is self-sustaining and self-synergizing. Uh, unlike what most people tell you to do, do not get God gods amongst men. This will ruin this build because you can only deal material damage types. That defeats the whole point, right? What we're doing here, we're freezing enemies, we're applying stasis, all for particular reasons to maximize our DPS, none of which are helped by material damage types. So we keep making our way down, and persistence hunting is a super important one. We're going to be proccing this all the time, so that's a 25% damage boost to basically all enemies. Make our way down. This is completely new, so those of you who are familiar with the Immortal Warrior King will not be familiar with this whatsoever. This is something new I discovered is if you work your way down into Undertaker, 1 in 10 enemies that die will drop a green health globe, which gives you a flat 30% damage boost as poison, which is absolutely amazing. This is amazing because of what we're doing with the ailment types, right? And I'll explain that to you once we start looking at our skills. So bear that in mind. Poison damage, 30% boost, very important. We make our way back, right? So back up to the soldier tree, come across and grab the extra uh, willpower and rage pool, and then work our way up into the Praetorian tree. I grab the extra block chance. Block chance is important, even holding a two-hander like we are, because we work our way down into Sacred Oath, apply two weakness stacks upon blocking an attack to targets in seven meter radius. Three, not two, three with the modifier, right? That's a fourth ailment. So that's, that's the two that we're applying with our skill. That's the, the toxin that we're applying conditionally when we grab a globe. So that's three ailment types, right? So that's... What what would that be? That would be an 80, no, 60% damage boost, give or take, if we take Immortal Offering into account. So that's 20% per type, you know, up to 60. Not too bad. And then that one, adding on top. So that that's uh, so far so good. Work our way into the Assassin Tree. Back into the Assassin Tree and then up into Time Weaver. Time Weaver is super important for this build. So you want to make your way up, grab the max element stacks. Dire Juncture and then the max element stacks again. Dire Juncture is super important, especially at high level expeditions to stop you getting one-shotted. And which time cannot heal is super important for this build. Now, you want to maximize and prioritize ether damage because that will afflict enemies with stasis. When you afflict them with stasis, they take 100% of the hit damage again after a delay or 120% if you get the modifier. This doesn't take into account crits, right? So it isn't as insane as you may think, but it's still, it's noticeable, right? It's super noticeable. And when you apply that, you get the flat 25% damage to enemies with impaired movement. It's an absolute no-brainer. You want to get that. Now, I've mo worked my way down into the Assassin Tree and grabbed the 25% damage when only one enemy is within a 7 meter radius. This is just to help with the end level bosses. I'm not really sure whether it's worth it, truth be told. The end level bosses are so broken right now. They're so not fun to play. Their HP pools are huge. Their, their resists are just through the roof. Their, the content is not balanced. So, eh, you know, take it or leave it, essentially. So, working our way back into Praetorian, we go up into the build maker, Child of Fury, right? We get another 10 rage per hit taken, which synergizes with our self ailments and the most important skills. Furious Appetite, you start to generate rage instead of willpower passively, super important for this build, and Frenzied Blows, basically a two times DPS increase because you're always above 750 rage with this build, pretty much always. So 
that you have to take this. This is if you're if you're making a new build and you're going up through this and getting that and da da da. So as soon as you grab all the crit stuff, make your way across and go straight into Child of Fury. Like this is the build maker. This makes this whole thing happen. Uh, assuming that you can you know maintain your rage costs low enough as you spin around to to maintain it. So. With that said, I think that about covers the, the bulk of everything, yes. So, I think we've spoken about, yep, Abyssal Shaper, that, and everything. So, mind you, this build is only level 77, there's still room to move. There are other things that you can do in other builds that we can create. We can actually do a kind of crazy thing here. If we go into Ancient Fervor in Oracle of the Trinity, Spells that inflict fire actually give us a flat 20% damage increase for 5 seconds. So we make our way across, you've got the extra points, you're level 90, or you spec differently to me, right? You've got that. You can actually make Bleeding Edge do fire damage, or you can make the Flight of Gavineer do fire damage. So before you run into every mob, you can basically just, bam, do your thing, fire, proc comes up, you've got 20% flat damage, your elements start building up, it's just synergy upon synergy upon synergy. It becomes a very, very cool thing. So if that's your kind of speed, consider specking into this. For most other people, I consider specking into more crit chance or more health pool. My build at present has a reasonable amount of resists. You know, it's up in the 50 to 60 percentile. But the health pool is quite small, which makes it somewhat annoying. So, attributes very quickly. I would recommend pumping more into toughness than I have. Um, most of mine goes into ferocity until I'm around 60% crit chance. That's where the diminishing returns are at. Toughness is the most important beyond that because the higher your health pool, the better you can survive the crazy ass damage being output in the high level expeditions. Okay, and before I lose my voice, let's go down into the skills. Pretty much a no brainer here for Sovereign Shout. It just makes us more effective all around, just makes us more survivable, just makes everything better. Bleeding Edge, we've changed up a little bit. The skill that used to make this work is Wicked Swing. Um, no, not Wicked Swing. What am I thinking? It's uh, Despotic Perseverance, right? Increases damage per ailment stack. Uh, every time we had ailment stacks on enemies and we'd have tons, this would scale insanely and it would just melt, guys. You'd be doing millions upon millions. No longer the case, so we dropped it completely because it's been nerfed into the ground. We now just have the flat weapon damage and crit damage boosts and we have it following us around and continues to spin after being thrown a skill again that's been massively nerfed has a 10 second cooldown still valuable and i'll show you why once we get into the mobs flight of uh wings of ishmir rather so we're trying to use this just to increase rage get a bunch of buffs and uh inflict stun on the enemies once we land and i'll show you guys again why this happens when we get into combat Skill loses its cooldown and costs one stamina point to use instead. This is important because it doesn't use rage, it just uses uh, stamina points. That way you can use it to kind of bail on bad situations or get into bad situations while generating rage rather than losing it. And blood for blood, or not, not rather than losing its rage, I mean instead of having the cooldown, it means you can spam Wings of Ishmir to your heart's content and that's important because you can use it as a mobility skill, getting around bosses and all that sort of stuff. Oh, it never cost rage, it always generated rage. Blood for Blood, very important for this build, increases damage on enemies suffering from DOT, which is always. Reduces movement speed for enemies inside the AoE, this actually procs our extra 25% damage to enemies with impaired movements. Uh, damaging area follows the target, follows you around, you know, no-brainer. 10% chance it'll explode and do more AoE. Increases attacks and spell speed each time you kill someone. Uh, this won't actually increase your tick rate with Bladestorm, but it will increase the rate at which you cast spells, which will help you recast when you're in the midst of a mob without dying and things like that. Increased chance to inflict elements on enemies inside the area, super important for us because we are an element build, and increases duration, again, no-brainer because it sustains for longer. And then, of course, there's the build maker. Increases rage generation, uh, ailment chance score, reduces rage cost, uh, can be held to prolong the duration of the skill. This is the, You need this, like, this is what makes it all work. You have to take unfettered determination. Increases damage per each ailment an enemy has. This is what gets us up to doing ticks in the millions sometimes. So this skill actually gets surprisingly powerful. 
Uh, Shredding Whirlwind, extra crit damage, and extra damage again increases our overall damage. Now, that about what covers the bulk want? of it. So let's load up one that's like, I don't know, try 136, something nice and comfortable. No, I did sure a 157 the on the last Storm video, and while we got through it, the game just doesn't, it doesn't scale too well at the high levels. And it's just not very fun to play up there. So we'll just do a comfortable one, let's say 137. Let's call this the mid to high game, right? So as you can see, this is basically the whirlwind barb archetype from the old days. For some reason I'm casting- oh, here we go, that's, that's more what I'm coming to expect. So you, you should be expecting crits in the half mil once you spool up from Bladestorm, sometimes heading up towards the mil range. Um, much of the time closer to a quarter mil, 200,000, things like that. All depends on how many ailment stacks you're afflicting them. As you can see, we just had four different uh, ailment stack types working off Immortal Offering. And let me try and explain nope, that to you guys very quickly fit. before we move on, right? So, what I've done is maximized ether damage in my primary weapon. That allows me to do stasis. Uh, because it's so high in frost, naturally, that's the second highest damage type, or I think the first highest. What we're doing is both freeze and stasis. So if one's not ticking, the other is, and that all applies the damage to enemies with impaired movement, which stacks with the... Well, it doesn't stack, but it also applies with blood for blood. So we always have some kind of impaired movement applying to the enemies, meaning we get a flat 25% damage boost. Um, because we're collecting those green orbs that drop one in every 10 enemies, our toxic damage will actually jump up and become one of the ailments that we do with one of our uh, weapon types, with one of our skill types rather. So we'll be doing three, um, we'll be doing a bunch of different ailments. So we'll be freezing them, we'll be applying stasis, we'll be doing bleed with bleeding edge, we'll be doing poison with bleeding edge as well, and we'll be applying weakness with the, um, the block node, right? Sacred Oath. So there's our four damage types. As you can see, very cool build. Puts out a lot of damage for something that's basically a mobility skill. We're applying more and more and more ticks to these guys. And just recast if things are giving you problems. And the more you attack them, the more and more damage you're gonna do. The more ailments that they have on them, the better it's all gonna go for you. And of course, I jumped into this expedition with a full inventory, so I can't, <laughs> I can't collect anything, but that's fine. So yeah, basically the the Whirlwind Barbarian Archetype, circa 2000, it lives. So the modus operandi with this build essentially is you can whirl around everywhere, like look my rage has stopped. I, you just whirl through the entire thing, you just keep whirling, you don't have to do anything, you can literally just do this and kill everyone. This depends how much patience you have. And mind you, if you're doing story mode or you're doing lower level expeditions, you're not up to 136 or the 150s or whatever, th this is it. Like, this this can be the game. You can literally just right-click your way through everything. However, if you want to make it a bit more effectual, blood for blood, jump in, bleeding edge, sovereign shout, right? And then start spinning around. That triggers all of your buffs in the correct order to basically melt everyone. All right, just melt, 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 melt. More bleeding edge, maybe, a bit more melt. So what's essentially happening is that when we do blood for blood, that increases our ailment chance and does a lot of cool things in our AoE. You can see those damage ticks like regenerating our, our rage. It's such a great synergistic build. So yeah, you get that great AoE effect. This will give you, Wings of Ishmael will give you a bunch of damage buffs and will stun all the enemies around you. And in the one and a half seconds of stun you have, you can actually cast Bleeding Edge. That'll start leeching life, so you've got more time. It means you can cast Sovereign Shout, get all of your buffs up, life leech, block chance, everything through the roof, movement speed, right? So we synergize with our kill and spin, spin to win kind of archetype. And then we just start right clicking through everything. So I don't think uh, there's not enough for you guys to be worth it. There we go. Bam, 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 and bam. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to do. And for a couple of seconds, you're unstoppable. AKA the unstoppable whirlwind barbarian, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is, in all of its glory. Now, is it as OP as throwing Flight of Gavineer and like one-shotting everything immediately because you have a 100% crit chance and you know, the, the AOE effect just crits all the time? No, no, 
We certainly had a much better time of it with the Immortal Warrior King, but that build is no longer viable. So this is the best that you're going to get. I'm actually very happy with it, considering the, the extent of the nerfs that were leveraged against warrior-based characters. Pick up those green orbs, do that toxic damage. So, the clearance times are certainly a little bit longer than they used to be, as you can see. It's not the experience we once knew and loved, but it's still pretty darn close. Some of the champions can give us a bit of trouble because we don't have Flight of Gavini to one-shot everyone. Uh, certainly the level bosses are a complete pain. They're just, they're not balanced very well. I'd say the champions aren't balanced very well either. Like, look, look how much longer we're hanging around than that guy compared to everybody else. If you just want to move around, you can cast Sovereign Shout and then just start spinning. It's one thing I love about this build is just the sheer mobility, the sheer rate at which you can get through the game. If you're playing the campaign in co-op with your friends, you will be the envy of the party. Because you can literally just do this and leave half-finished enemies behind and they're gonna hate you. They're, they're really just gonna hate you. But uh, you won't care. Because you'll be off in the distance somewhere. We've almost topped up the expedition bar there. We've almost called the end boss. I wish the mobs were a little bit more dense in this. It would make my life a little bit easier. But you don't always get what you wish for. You can see even the guys with the high HP pools, we just melt through them. Bam, bam, and bam. I appear to be lacking a... Lacking some ailment types here, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Which one am I lacking again? Possibly Rend? Now? No. So if you're very thrifty with your build and the way that you basically itemize, you can be doing four or even five different element types and that'll all stack with Immortal, to, uh, immortal Offering down there. Right now, I won't say I'm fully optimized. I'm still doing a lot of freeze and a lot of stasis, which are things that don't seem to apply in the same way that I would... Yeah, we're doing poison and bleed stacks there for some reason. I don't know what that's about. But as you can see, the game's very dynamic. Your damage types change all the time, depending on how many, like, immortal offering stacks you have and whatever else. Maybe once these disappear, we'll go back to... Yeah, we go back to freeze and stasis, right? So, if anything, I need more ether damage so I can put more guys in stasis. And that's what I was lacking. I was lacking the, the stasis ailments. So hopefully we can apply those. Yep, stasis ailments bleed as well. And then if a green orb comes out, we'll go into positive, positive poison mode. And then start doing our third. And then the more we block, the more we'll do it. There we go. There's our weakness stacks. Poison hasn't come out yet. Once again, only a 1 in 10 chance of those coming out. Oh, good. A very fun enemy type, not. I can't do that. So as you can see, the end level bosses are a bit of a pain. Now we've procced the 100% uh, extra... It's called stasis damage one. So we use... Getting double the ticks, super important when it comes to bosses. Another feed and, bolt. you know, <laughs> dead reasonably quickly. Uh, so, that being said, one thing I've forgotten about. Now, one thing I'll probably do is unspec from clandestine execution and lithe down there and go up into damage over time, trigger with a critical hit, deals critical damage. I'm not much of an ailment guy, I'm not much of a... DOT guy, but since we're so DOT centric, I think something like this will probably give you a lot more effective DPS on the the level bosses. But in a nutshell, that's the build. Spin to win. It's back, guys. Diablo 2. And just quickly before I forget, we're gonna go over some of the gear, right? 
I have a lot of specking going into block chance and all resistance score. That's pretty much a no-brainer. The more all resistance you have, I mean, the less damage you take. So we've got about 50 to 60% resistance to most damage types, which is very helpful if only material were as high. Uh, then we go into block chance. And the reason that we go into block chance, even though we have a two-hander, and our block chance is up in the 30% range, is again to proc the... Sacred Oath, which gives us weakness stacks to the enemies around us, which is more effective DPS, yada yada da. And all of the other things are prioritizing either damage, crit chance, uh, crit damage, some kind of health or all res, and uh, rage and willpower cost decrease on the shoulder pads. You can get that on the gauntlets as well. And of course, very important, transfer time decrease between willpower and rage. Uh, the reason for that is, as you can see, our rage starts replenishing almost immediately after we whirlwind around everywhere. So otherwise you'd have to wait a little bit for the replenishment and then you wouldn't be at the, the cap and you wouldn't be getting all the respective glorious rage bonuses that we rely on with this build. If you liked what you saw, if you want more build videos, make sure to smash subscribe and like. If you disliked the video, which is wholly understandable, smash the dislike twice for me. And until then, let me know how you feel about the playthrough of the story mode. Is that something you want to see? Uh, what kind of other build videos do you want to see? Are you interested in spell stalkers? You want to see, you know, the Robin Hood archetype? You know, what can we try to make work under the current meta? So until next time, see you guys and have fun.